Welcome everyone. This is a tutorial video to guide you in the use of Anura 3D MPM code. I will present the column collapse exercise in chapter 6 of the tutorial manual. With this video you will learn how to model the collapse of a dry soil column on a flat surface. You will get familiar with boundary condition by applying and modifying them with fixities and remove fixities features. Problem definition. This exercise contains a two-dimensional example which can be modified for axisymmetric or three-dimensional calculations. The column has an aspect ratio h divided by w equal to 2 and lies above a base layer included for basal friction. In addition, on the right side of the column, an area of potential movement is included in the mass discretization. The calculation will be performed in two stages. Number one, stress initialization with quasi-static gravity loading and number two, failure of the column by removal of column fixities. Creating input data in GID. After saving your project in the desired folder and specifying the problem type Anula 3D 2021, you can start creating a geometry. By using the command line, you can create closed polygons and based on these closed polygons that in the present case are all rectangles, uh, you will build the surfaces. The surfaces are built by selecting the four edges of every rectangle as you will see soon. Here we are, surface specification. It is a necessary passage to uh, apply, to assign material properties to the surfaces. Let's go into the material property specification. So we go into material and we create a material for each one of the two entities that we will consider. The first one is the base. We specify a dry material and the constitutive model, linear elasticity. We now assign this material to the surfaces belonging to the base. After this step, I create a new material named column, again a dry material, but in this case the constitutive model is a more Coulomb, and I assign this new material to the column element. At the end of this step, always remember to check the correct assignment of the material to the entities with the draw color command. We are now ready to specify the material points per entity. In this case, we assign three material points per entity uh, to the base and to the column and check the correct assignment again with the draw color command. We are now ready to assign the boundary conditions. In this case, they are specified with the fixities command. We have to start by selecting the entity where to apply the condition the phase, solid, because we are considering a dry column on uh, a dry base, and the direction of the fixity. So we are now uh, selecting the fixity along x and we are assigning it to the line at x equal to 0 and at x equal to 10. We are also assigning it at the right hand side of the column, so x equal to 1. We are now fully fixing the base of the model and assigning a fixity along y uh, on the top line of the model. We check the correct assignment with the draw color command. The assigned fixities can be maintained throughout the simulations or removed at a certain point. To this aim, we can use the command remove fixities. The command remove fixities allows us to select again an entity, a phase and a direction where we want to remove the fixity, in this case the one applied on the right hand side of the column. Let's define our mesh. First of all, we double check that the quadratic type is normal. After this step, we specify the element type, triangle, and we assign the specification to all of the surfaces of my model by selecting them. At this point, we want to work with a structured mesh, so we use the command line, assign size, and specify a value of 0.1. We assign this to all the lines of the model, and we press ESC to uh, correctly assign this. At this point, I decide to generate my mesh and to visualize this. But with this command, I can see that it was not completely correct, so I forgot to assign the structure feature to the surfaces. Now I am selecting them, specifying again the value of 0.1 and selecting also the lines bounding my surfaces and pressing ESC for the correct assignment. I can now again generate my mesh and visualize the uh, correct 
uh, mesh that I obtain in this case. We are now ready to specify the calculation data. We go into the calculation data panel and uh, we specify all the parameters necessary for the first step of our simulation, so the initialization phase. We select a 2D plane strain analysis, we uh, specify a number of two load steps and a time per load step equal to one, current number equal to 0 0.98, and application of gravity stepwise starting from a value of zero uh, to a value of one concerning the load multiplier of the gravity. We use a quasi-static uh, procedure and uh, we impose a value of 0 0.75 to the damping factor and we make use of the uh, strain smoothing. We accept all the parameters modification and we close this window. We save our problem, our project, and we go into the generate a neural 3D file. As you can see, a useful reminder windows appear to make you check all the information specified. The files are now generated and we can go in the uh, folder for the calculation phase. Performing calculation in a neural 3D. You can now open your project folder and uh, you will observe, you will notice that a new folder, Anura 3D, uh, folder has been created. In this one you can find all the files necessary for your calculation. CPS, GON, Calculate, the Executable and the Constitutive uh, Models DLL. At this point I always check that the Calculate include the path where to find the executable, executable and the Anura 3D files. And I can now launch my simulation by double-clicking Calculate. This is the uh, initialization phase, so we have to wait these two steps where the quasi-static procedure is used. As a result, we will obtain uh, the initial uh, stress distribution uh, in our model. At the end of this step, we will introduce some modification in the CPS file. We open now CPS number 3 and we uh, modify this file in the following manner. We modify the number of load step to 52 and the time per load step. We check that the uh, gravity is correctly um, characterized by uh, a 1, 1 multiplier. We remove the uh, quasi-static procedure assignment. We have to reduce now the damping factor to 0 0.05 to allow the free propagation on the base. And we have to remove the fixity by selecting one uh, in the first, first spot, which corresponds to solid remove fixity. We save, close, and again, we launch our simulation by double clicking the calculate button. and we wait that our computation progress until its end. Visualization of results in Paraview. To visualize the simulation output, in Paraview we have to open the folder where we perform the calculation and open uh, the VTK files related to mesh, scalar, vector and tensor quantities. We can start by visualizing the mesh, so we go into the mesh, uh, solid color wireframe, and at this point we can check the result of the initial uh, phase, the one uh, articulated in two steps. So we can, uh, according to the tutorial manual, visualize the uh, vertical and the horizontal stress. So the vertical one is the component number four of the effective stress tensor. And we can uh, go into step number two to see actually the end of this phase, uh, select, uh, rescale uh, our color and um, change the range uh, according again to the tutorial manual. But as you can see, uh, these are uh, the values that we uh, obtain. We can, check if, we can check if they are correct. And after the vertical stress, we can check also the horizontal stress, which is component uh, zero uh, of the uh, effective stress tensor.
At this point, we can analyze uh, the propagation and uh, the final runout. Here, I just selected the scalar material ideas, so you can see how the column is propagating on top of the base layer. And at the end, so for step 52, I can now uh, visualize some uh, quantities that are present in the tutorial manual. The first one is the horizontal displacement. As you can see here, rescale 0, uh, 6 meter, because the unit of measure is a uh, meter for the displacement. Uh, we can, uh, in addition to this, also uh, visualize the uh, deviatoric strain, which in turn is no more a vector quantity, but a scalar quantity. And uh, I'm going to rescale it again uh, coherently with the range proposed in the tutorial manual, 0, 1. Usually, the deviatoric strain is very useful to appreciate the uh, onset of failure in uh, slope stability problems, for example. And finally, in the uh, tutorial manual, you can see also the uh, vertical effective stress uh, profile uh, at the end, which I am again rescaling uh, coherently with the uh, tutorial manual uh, range. Lastly, I'd like to show you how you can visualize the propagation in a slower manner to observe uh, the collapse in greater detail. This is done by um, working on the real time at the lower portion of the Paraview interface, assigning a duration uh, as long as you want. And then, as you can see, the propagation is slowed down and you can appreciate it in, uh, uh, with a bigger detail. In this video, you learn how to model a soil column collapse problem with Anula 3D. In particular, the simulation was articulated in two phases. The first one aimed at installing uh, the stress gradient in the soil column performed with a quasi-static procedure, followed by the column release or propagation thanks to the remove fixity features. When moving into Paraview, we learn how to visualize uh, our mesh and some tensor, scalar and vector quantities. The examples are listed in the slide. I hope you enjoyed the video and thank you for your attention.